you very much, Dr. Rainwater. Morgan, can you tell us a little about yourself? Um, I actually grew up in East Texas, not far from UT Tyler in a town called Slocum, which most people have never heard of. And I actually did not even write any code until I was in college. So um, my high school, we didn't have any computer science courses or anything. It was very small. Yeah. So when I graduated, you know, I actually started at UT Tyler, but I dropped out my first semester and I ended up just starting my own business, Morgan's Computer Services, where I did computer repair and tune-ups and stuff like that. And then I earned my associate's degree at Trinity Valley Community College. And then once I finished there, I came back to UT Tyler, where I earned my bachelor's in computer science, obviously in 2017. And then I started at IBM, you know, again, as a software developer, and I've worked my way up to senior cloud engineer. And while I was working, I earned my master's in computer science from Texas State University. Just super fun, super stressful, but totally worth it. And I just, I love being here in Austin, Texas. So you were UT Tyler class of 2017 for yep. your uh, bachelor's in computer science. Can you tell us a bit about your transition from education to the workforce? It was challenging to say the least. Um, I remember I applied for, I kept this big spreadsheet. I had applied for over 300 different jobs, just looking like on Indeed and different employer websites, you know, stuff like that. And I didn't get that many interviews, unfortunately. I think I had a total of four or five different interviews out of the whole thing. So I was very discouraged. You know, I had applied at IBM as one of those. I think I had applied for four or five different positions and they had me do a couple of coding tests online. I took three and then I passed two of them and then ended up getting hired for one. So went from 300 plus down to, you know, the one position. I love that you had a spreadsheet tracking that too. <laughs> Oh, I also noticed you participated in a, a Computing Research Association's REU during the summer of 2015. Can you tell us uh, about what you worked on? With it was that? at the University of Alabama, roll type. During the summer, the title of our project was called Pervasive Systems for Elder Care. And the goal of it was to create a voice activated um, Windows phone app so that we could provide elderly citizens with some sort of app that they could use to control devices in their home. But the idea is that, you know, if you're an elderly person, you're going to get, you're going to have a better quality of life the longer you can stay in your home versus having to move into some sort of like long-term care facility. We wrote the app in C Sharp, which is super fun to learn. Um, and the whole thing sounds very complicated, but actually at the end of the summer, all we had managed to do was turn on a light bulb. <laughs> that's all our app did. But that's kind of the purpose of the, the research experiences is that you're going to take college students who don't have a lot of experience in whatever specific area this is. And they're going to go and, you know, we, we actually lived there on the campus for six weeks that summer. It was like kind of like having a full-time job, you know, every day you go into the lab and you're working on stuff. And then we also had some fun activities that we got what to do. What would you say was your greatest takeaway from that research experience? Definitely learning C sharp because that kind of set off a chain of events outside of what I had learned in school. I hadn't really worked on any projects or done any coding or anything like that. But while I was there, you know, I learned C sharp for the app. And then I believe it was a year, a year and a half, maybe there is a NASA facility in Palestine called Columbia's Scientific Balloon Facility. And they were looking for an intern who knew C sharp. And so I was like, oh, wow, like I know C sharp. I didn't really think I was going to get it because, you know, I just had like six weeks of experience, but I did sure enough, you know, I got, I got hired for the internship. So just, you know, learning C sharp in that six week period led me to having a NASA internship, which is pretty cool. So I understand you're now a senior cloud engineer at IBM. Can you share with us a little bit more about your experience in getting hired by IBM? Well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, there was like the coding test that we we have to do online to get hired. So if you pass the coding test, basically, if your code compiles and gives the right answer, then that means you've passed the assessment. Um, and then you go through a couple of interview experiences. IBM actually has this really cool thing that you do before you get hired. It's called the finish line event. And so they, they fly out all of the candidates to some IBM location. I think it was in Atlanta. Yeah, it was in Atlanta. And you work on a project with another group of potential new hires. And you're there for like three days, I think it was. And you're doing like fun activities and you're hearing people talk about what it's like to work at IBM. So you go through this whole experience, you know, and then if they 
you know, if you, if you do well and, you know, they see that you're working well with other people, then you get a job offer. Well, yeah. So I started as a software developer, entry level software developer. And then we had some kind of change ups in the company and organization specifically. And so my manager asked if I wanted to become a, a customer success manager, which back then was referred to as a cloud adoption leader. And back then I was like, no, I don't want to do this. I just want to write code all day. I don't want to talk to anybody. So obviously I liked it because I ended up doing it for about three years. Um, so uh, what customer success managers do is we work with customers to sort of guide them along their AI journey. And in my case, we focused on AI, I've got chatbots coming out of my ears, essentially. Um, and so we help them make architectural decisions and help them actually get hands on and build POCs. Um, and we also do, you know, some knowledge transfer, like here's how you build a chatbot, here's how you do this, you know, here's how you deploy a cloud native application to IBM Cloud, stuff like that. So, but now I'm actually in the process of transitioning from my customer success manager role to a senior cloud engineer. Being a senior cloud engineer, I'm going to be doing a lot of similar stuff, except I think the main difference is I'm going to be more focused on just creating proof of concepts with customers and I won't be, you know, have a specific set of customers assigned. So for the past three years, I would always have like a specific, either one customer at a time or multiple groups that I was responsible for. So I think that's going to be the main difference, but being a senior cloud engineer to be able to do just the coding stuff and then also provide some mentorship to new hires and again, knowledge transfer, you know, teach them what I know about cloud native development. Is there anything um, else you can tell us about the kind of work you do at IBM? I spent a lot of time teaching my customers how to do stuff essentially, you know, so if someone comes to me and says like, Hey, I have a chat bot, um, and I need to be able to connect it to a backend database, you know, something along those lines, then a lot of my job is I'm going to go and actually put something together for them. And either, whether it's code or like a how to, or like a video or a blog or whatever, you know, lots of knowledge transfer. Yes. Yeah, so I'd say that's, that's a general day in the life, you know, I'll be presented with some kind of a problem that the customer has. And then I just have to take that and figure out how am I going to make them successful? And a word of advice to anyone watching this, if I could do it, you could definitely do it. 